Okay, let's do a sort of a podcast here. Um, maybe that's the first of many ums. First things first, some coffee. Oh, you can see my boom is affected by my picking the coffee up on the table. My boom. My camera boom. Okay, I want to talk about gear acquisition syndrome or gas. Let's see if I can just riff on this a little bit. Also, I wanted to get into pedals versus VST effects, hardware pedals versus software effects. I suppose I could begin by telling the story of I have not had multiple guitars. It's only been for the last year or so that I've gotten more guitars, but I had a single guitar from the year 2000 to the year 2015. It was an Ibanez RG120. It was made in Korea or uh, Indonesia. I think it was Korea. It's, it was made in an Asian co country. It's, it's stuck away in a gig bag over there and I don't feel like going and getting it. It was a $200 guitar and I would record through the Boss recorders just make four track and eight track demos depending on the machine that I had. I was very pleased with the Cosm COSM effects. I've heard people say bad things about them. I thought they were great. And the way I could just dial up a bass line and play bass on my guitar, that was really cool. So I would just use the program drums. I started programming the drums myself, but the, I would use the stock patterns in the machine and I was happy as a clam just laying down a couple guitar lines, a bass line, and some vocals. That was it. That was the extent of my gear for from about 2000 all the way till 2015. No, 2009. It was in 2009 I got VSTs. I still only had one guitar, though. You know, there are exceptions. I had an Ibanez RG in 2007. I had that for about three months. Uh, but basically... It was the Ibanez, a $200 Ibanez. That same guitar, I don't think you can buy a new RG120. They have similar guitars, and they're down to 149 They're probably a little higher quality. But I loved the 24 fret neck, and I had several Ibanez guitars back through the 90s. The As the price goes up, the necks get better but even on that two hundred dollar get on a budget ibanez the neck was i i considered it to be outstanding so the point being that i played this ibanez i made hundreds of song recordings pretty much for my own enjoyment once in a while i would make a cd and hand it to somebody and they would say hey i like i really like that song or that song but i just do it because i need to do it I'm sure there's some of you that will understand that. Um, but again, back, getting back to the point, I only had the RG guitar and whatever simple recording interface. And I made all of these demos. And I even enjoyed having it kind of simplified. Then at some point, I got off of the Boss Machines and into recording on a computer. It took me about six or eight months to suss it out, but I decided I like Renoise, and Renoise is perfect for what I'm doing, working by myself. It's not something you'd use to record, you know, through your an eight-channel I.O. device or a 16-channel I.O. device or whatever. It can really only record one track at a time. Now, I've heard there's a thing called Rewire that would allow you to record multiple tracks in Renoise. I don't know, I'm not sure how that works. I never bothered. Usually, if something works, I don't mess with it. And it worked for what I was doing. Now, if I wanted to record eight tracks, you know, three or four mics on a drum kit, a bass player, a guitar player, a room mic, a vocalist, kind of a simple rock band setup, record them all at once, I would go with Reaper, but I haven't had to do that. But I just have a mental note. I would go with Reaper. But again, the point is, the my setup was very simple. I still only had the one guitar from 2009 to 2015. I was working in Renoise, using 
almost exclusively renoises, built-in effects, or buying some low-budget, high-quality, you know, low-price, high-quality effects. I was into the De La Mancha UK, De La Mancha .co .uk, synths and effects. I had several compressors from him, for instance. All of these were fifteen and twenty dollar plugins. Effects being VSTs and instruments being VSTIs, but the whole superset of effects and instruments being plugins. Virtual studio technology, I guess it's called. From it was invented by Steinberg, and that everyone could wrote could write to the spec. Okay, so I was happy working in the box. I was basically recording the guitar direct into an interface device using various amp sims to try to emulate, you know, a good a good guitar sound. It took me a while to get something that was actually halfway decent, at least to these ears. Uh, but yeah, some of the amp sims, I thought they sounded pretty realistic. I liked the Le Pou or Pouline, I'm not sure which one he actually goes by. But for free ones, uh, his were great. I even PayPal'd him a bit of money. I bought copies of Computer Music Magazine and I would get the instruments like Dune CM. I had a favorite, it was called Medusa 2 that I used for bass lines. It just was so quick and there were things you could do with it in Renoise uh, with the signal follower and connecting it into the kick drum. All this stuff I was doing in software with just one guitar. Okay, so fast forward to the whole point of this rap, or at least half the point of this rap. I bought a GNL Legacy in Lake Placid Blue. It was a Strat style guitar. I bought that last summer and I thought, well, that's going to be the only guitar I'm ever going to need. I've got really fond memories of G&L guitars from when I was a kid. And I started investigating G&Ls and you could have one of these Lake Placid Blue or whatever color the Legacy Strat, the S style. You know, with some pretty cool sparkly, real sparkly pickups. In, sparkly in their sound. They're, it was chimey, you know, very, uh, very cool pickups. You could have that for 450 bucks or something. And so I bought that, but somehow it just uh, got me going in a cycle of gas or gear acquisition syndrome. And I purchased, I just started after a few more months later, after that, I started just purchasing all these guitars and pedals and everything. And I don't really know what I was doing, except uh, it was a lot of fun until my bank account kind of ran out. So it's a weird thing, you know. Here I was, I worked all these years, never really caring about getting more gear, happy with what I had. And all of a sudden I get a little savings. I get into a situation where I have a little bit of savings. And then I just start buying all this gear. And then when the money runs out, I still want more gear. And I'm not making as many... <laughs> I'm not making as many songs as I used to. But I'm just thinking of getting new gear. So it's, it's kind of a slippery slope. I don't know if I have um, an OCD or something. Uh, an extreme personality that lends itself to going on these binges, you know, that could be part of it. But it definitely took off. And I just realized it recently, you know, wow, you you still want all this gear. But you have all this gear you just bought and you haven't even demoed it all properly. And you're not making the, the songs that you used to make when you had virtually no gear. So it was kind of an eye opener. So gas is a very real thing. So I guess I would just warn you about it. Really, you can do an awful lot with on a very low budget 
with very few tools, especially in today's world of recording, you basically have a recording studio in your, as long as you have a tablet or a PC or something. So there's that initial investment, three, four, five hundred bucks on a machine. Actually, you could get an XP machine that would run Renoise. You could get it for like 120 bucks, even with the monitor. The Renoise is about 75 bucks. For 200 bucks, you'd have your recording studio. You get an IO device, it's like another 150. IO devices are getting better and better. The semi pro stuff is actually better than ever. You know, it's almost pro. So you're looking at uh, under 500 to get you started easily. You know, you could probably get some pedals, an amp, a guitar, an IO device, something like Renoise or Reaper, and a computer, all for five to eight hundred dollars. Which is, you know, it might sound like a big chunk of change, but it's really nothing compared to what the kinds of numbers that were being thrown around as I was growing up. Now, back then, you needed at least thousands of dollars, if not tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars to get into a recording studio type of situation. Now, there's all kinds of caveats surrounding what I just said, but basically, you have a multi-track studio for less than $1,000, even as low as 500 400 300 bucks, depending on what you do. Microphones are... You know, you could even get a decent sound out of a $15 mic that you'll go and read the reviews for it and they'll swear that it sounds as good as an SM57, which is a $100 mic. Or you can get a condenser for 50 bucks. or I even have one over here for $29 that I, I want to. That's another thing I want to demo. I've been using the Behringer C1 pretty much exclusively on the guitar end of things here. This here is one of them $15 mics that you can get. Uh, I even forget the brand. Digital reference. Okay, anyway, I'm beginning to run out of time. I don't, I don't want to ramble too much. But to some of us, gas is a very real thing, and it's got to be watched out for. I just try to be thankful for the, the opportunity I've had recently to have acquired all this gear. And I will say real quick about pedals versus VSTs. I know in another video when I was demoing some pedals, I said pedals aren't really necessary, but I think there's a real tactile thing about pedals. And it's just, you know, pushing the button with your foot or getting down there and turning dials. It's, um, it's really cool. And there's a lot to be said for it. I think my pedal board would probably only have five, six, seven, eight pedals. Definitely a looper would be one of them and some kind of overdrive, maybe two or three different delays and a chorus. And then uh, a lo-fi machine or a ho-tone crush, something like that, that would make up my pedal board. But pedals are great fun but if you're on a budget, you can do all of your effects in the computer. There's some great chorus and flanger and distortion built right into the host software, for instance, in my Renoise. And then on top of that, there's all these virtual effects that can be downloaded for free. And I'm not even talking about going into wares. I've avoided that myself. I don't want the bad energy of stealing of using something that a developer doesn't want me using without having paid for it. So I have always been strictly, I only use what I can pay for. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to get into a sermon. I won't hold it against anybody if they're using wares. That's just for me. But there's definitely something to be said for pedals versus VSTs. What I'd like to see in pedals would be LFOs to automate the knobs that exists there. Maybe that's another talk sometime, but I'm quickly running out of time here. I would say be wary of gas and you can be creative regardless pretty much of what you have as far as gear. <laughs>